How's it going everyone? It's Avi from Weather Sponge 5000 and in this video of course we're gonna focus on Invest 94L which likely will become Tropical Storm Tammy in the very near future and potentially could strengthen up to Hurricane Tammy in the more long term future. Take a look at the latest run of the Canadian model. The Canadian model is still persistent on bringing a tropical storm or potentially a hurricane right over the Lesser Antilles and uncomfortably close to the island of Puerto Rico. We do see the millibar pressure drop down to around 989 millibars and depending on the um, wind field of this storm system, this could be considered a hurricane at this millibar pressure or a strong tropical storm. Either way, you would experience major impacts right over the Lesser Antilles and this occurs right around the Saturday October 21st time frame so of course if we in a scenario like this um, on Saturday the Lesser Antilles should expect strong winds as well as very heavy rainfall in excess of 5 to 8 inches and that's the thing with tropical um, cyclones is that you don't necessarily need a very strong wind speed to produce uh, extremely dangerous um, flood threat since of course we've seen tropical storms very weak tropical storms at that um, produce a high amount of rainfall and this may not be the exception right um, right here where um, this is expected to bring a heavy amount of rainfall especially on the eastern side if this were to move over the lesser Antilles however um, we still have a decent amount of uncertainty between the computer models like I'm gonna show you right now taking I'm um, comparing this to what the European model the latest run of the European model um, we do see the European model the good news is that the Europe um, the model isn't forecasting this to really strengthen much more than a weak tropical storm to potentially even a uh, status that's lower than that where it mainly stays um, relegated as being a tropical wave not really strengthening much um, maybe at worst a tropical storm with a millibar pressure like this but most likely it would be just considered your average tropical wave moving through which would certainly be good news it would still bring an enhanced amount of rainfall right over lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico and potentially as far west as the Dominican Republic and Haiti but certainly wouldn't be as impactful when it comes to wind as well as of course rough surf coastal flooding um and most and it wouldn't be as impactful when it comes to rainfall either since this would overall be a weaker storm and in the, a scenario like this of course the dry air would be would have to be a little bit more abundant for this not to strengthen into a tropical storm so the rainfall threat should be minimized in a scenario like this as well um, um however taking a look at the gfs model while the gfs model does expect it to strengthen a lot more the good news is that it doesn't really come close to the caribbean islands so um so the gfs and the european model um um in each of their own ways doesn't want to bring a significant threat to the Caribbean with the European model while it does bring it over the Caribbean it's it doesn't really strengthen into a tropical storm to worry about while the GFS model does strengthen this into a hurricane it doesn't bring it close to the Caribbean so there's still a pretty large gap when it comes to the forecasted trajectory and like I've been saying it really all depends on the amount of ridging that's just a north it we're still potentially five days from this reaching the uh, the um at least its closest point to the caribbean wherever that ends up being um could be over the caribbean or could be out to sea like gfs model is suggesting but it really all depends on this ridge let's take a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly we do see in the gfs model scenario it expects a much stronger low pressure system right over the northeast at this time which by the way the northeast wouldn't need to worry about that for heavy rainfall and um stronger wind gusts especially along the coast but that's besides the point the point is is that um this low pressure system could be key in weakening this ridge at, and steering this storm out to sea which will certainly be the best case scenario so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to the strength of this low pressure system which will depend on how strong northerly winds will be to create a higher amount of instability for this low to strengthen and weaken this ridge uh, to determine if this will move northward a little earlier or move northward a little later and still bring impacts to the Caribbean. That will be key over the next several days. Comparing the millibar, um, at least a geopotential height anomaly to the European model, we see the European model is expecting the ridge to be a lot stronger. This trough to not be as strong at around the same 
time period, which is the reason why this tropical wave moves towards the Caribbean. But the good news is that the European model doesn't expect it to reach tropical storm status. And the reason why is due to is partially due to the strong amount of wind shear it's expected to deal with and the lack of instability surrounding this low pre this tropical wave. Because if we were to move towards a point we um where we're at now, there is a decent amount of convective activity surrounding a low pressure system. However, the European model expects that the lower level winds are gonna be much stronger than the upper level winds thanks to an upper level low that's going to be located just to the north of this storm that's going to push the moisture in the upper levels a little bit further eastward well to the east of the center circulation which will create a storm that's very asymmetrical and not very efficient um, when it comes to intensification which is the reason why the european model doesn't expect much strengthening if any strengthening at all where we see the storm just becomes too lopsided for the convective activity to be enhanced as well as the amount of convergence surrounding the center circulation because all the latent heat is being released on the eastern side which means that it, it's definitely going to be a little bit too long of distance for that latent heat that's descending to reach and converge towards the center of circulation which creates a very inefficient heat engine and with how much stable air there is along the surface there isn't really much of an incentive for the latent heat release due to condensation to descend and converge towards the very weak center of circulation so as a result we do see a fairly weak storm doesn't really strengthen into tropical storm status hopefully this is the best um, this is a scenario. Let me show you guys the sounding to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. We do see the winds along the surface, or at least closer to the surface, are a lot stronger than the winds we see in the upper levels, which means that we see a much weaker storm. Comparing that to the GFS model, the GFS model expects the very opposite. Uh, much more strengthening, much more moisture, and while it does become slightly lopsided, the wind, um, the wind shear does have at least somewhat of an effect. If we were to take a look at the soundings, we see that while the wind direction does shift quite a bit, we do see that the upper low winds are still relatively strong to, for the moisture to at least keep up enough with the center circulation along the surface for the storm for the storms um, for the um, convergence to be maximized and the convective activity. To me maximize and and it stakes in part due to the fact that this storm is expected to move northward which means that the that the wind direction won't be that much different between the or, or at least the a wind speed won't be that much different between the different levels of the atmosphere so as a result we do see a stronger storm um so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to how the upper level winds will build right over the center circulation let me show you guys the um, with forecast and wind shear map we do see there will be a decent amount of wind shear but the gfs model doesn't expect this wind shear to be enough to really deter this from intensifying so going to be very interesting to see how the upper level winds will shift over the next several hours but definitely keep this in mind over the caribbean because it's very well possible you could see a tropical cyclone move over this area taking a look at the upper level winds over invest 94l we do see the upper level winds are relatively um, um, light right over the center of circulation, which is will promote strengthening, and this likely will become a tropical storm at the very least. The big question remains: How strong will the ridge be to the north there? Um, because the stronger it is, the more likely the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico will experience direct impacts, which would certainly be a concern for you guys. We're gonna really get a better idea um, as we approach tomorrow and Wednesday. Um, once the computer models really hone in on the conditions as the storm system continues ahead further westward So I'll definitely keep you guys updated over the next few days But the Caribbean definitely pay close attention to this because this could be a uh, imminent threat And here's a look at the National Hurricane Center's latest forecasts um, when it comes to the seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook we do see that the National Hurricane Center still expects this to have a high chance of developing over the next seven days. It is slightly lower than what we saw a little bit um, just two days ago where the chance was at 90%, but it is a little bit higher compared to yesterday because yesterday the chance lowered to 70%. Now the National Hurricane Center is back to giving this an 80% chance. So most likely we will see a tropical storm and we do see the Lesser Antilles and even portions of the Windward Islands are in the cone 
zone of uncertainty. So you definitely need to be aware of this, mainly when it comes to heavy rainfall, um, the heavy rainfall possibility. And here's a quick look at what the ensemble members are stating at this time. And we do see, while a decent amount, I'll say actually most of the European malls do take a landfall somewhere over the Lesser Antilles and potentially as far west as Puerto Rico. We do see most of them don't want to develop this into a uh, tropical storm. As I'll say, whether um, it'll most like it most likely will develop into a tropical storm, even um, with the ensemble members, a, a good amount of the ensemble members disagreeing. Um, however, the good news is that the European model doesn't ex um, doesn't expect this to become very strong. So a hurricane making landfall, even in category one, would I'll say still be a little bit of a reach. But since the computer models have been all over the place over the past several days, I still wouldn't rule out the possibility of a hurricane landfall. And taking a look at the GFS and some members, most of them still do want to take it out to sea. With a couple of them wanting to take it over the Lesser Antilles, but expect a lot of changes with the forecast both of the most reliable compute models still have a pretty big disagreement regarding the trajectory so it's going to be interesting to see the changes so the forecast is still far from certain so the caribbean you still need to be aware of this i wouldn't panic just yet but i'll say definitely at least um, be prepared for the possibility of a tropical storm or potentially a low end hurricane by as early as saturday but that's it for now, guys. I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather-related content. And I hope you guys all have a great day.